name's KT. KT, I'm Steve. Nice to meet you, Steve. This is my Sam. friend Sam. Nice to meet you, Sam. So, uh, you guys are obviously some bluegrassers, man. I was listening down the hall. Oh, yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> From around this area? Um, I'm actually from Baltimore, right. eastern Baltimore County. All right. Yeah. Um, all my life, and then we moved here uh, to Salisbury uh, three years ago. Three years ago? Three so years ago. So you're yeah. what they call it. Come here. You got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it. So how do you, how do you know this wonderful man right here? Sam was actually a banjo student. Oh, okay. So you're, mine. you're so you're a teacher. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He was a banjo student of mine in about 2010 or 2011. We met. And he just got so good, he just I just I just stopped going to his house and giving them lessons. <laughs> but he was teaching me after a while. Well, hey, that's Sam's, that's kinda, Sam's a great banjo player. Yeah, so I mean that's what you can hope for as a teacher is that you know your <laughs> yeah. student comes up and above you. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So where are you from? Are you from this area? I grew up in the Annapolis area and went to Annapolis High School. Went to school at College Park. Uh -huh. uh, I started playing the banjo when I was about fifteen or sixteen. Uh, that was when uh, like Pete Seeger and Peter Paul and sure, Mary and sure, Kings sure. and Trier was was a all. Folk movement. And so it was more of a strumming kind of a banjo. And back in those days, uh, it wasn't. They didn't have no internet, of course, and so it's hard to learn the different techniques and all. So I put it down. But then when I got older, I thought, you know, I got into my fifties. That's I think probably now I'm seventy-five now. So uh, I guess I started playing a little bit, and uh, when I was in my fifties. I got a better banjo. When I was a teenager, I didn't have any money to buy a good instrument or anything. Mm -hmm. So I decided to try to get a better instrument and uh, hired Steve to try to teach me what he knew, some of what he knew. But you know, after a while, I mean, you gotta let them, gotta let them, you gotta, you cut, gotta, them gotta free. cut them loose. Yeah. You gotta cut them loose and let them learn their own stuff and, uh, yeah. you know. But Sam and I play, um, we love to play together. You know, that's the important thing. And you guys sound great together. Thank you. you, thank you. Uh,
not to like it, man. You gotta play it before you go. <laughs> you might not go home with this one, buddy. <laughs> Tell you what, that guitar sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Can you. Tell me a little bit about this guitar. Yeah, you this is here? a uh, 1956 Martin D28. 1956. 1956. And the only thing that's not original. This is a, this is the kicker. The only thing that's not original on it is the nut. <laughs> this. So you're telling me the bridge is original. The bridge is original. The pins are original. Wow. 56. And this was a special order. And I didn't know that until I contacted the Martin Company. This was a special order with the double pick, uh, so you can play it double upside, pick guard, left so you can pick it left, restring it, and pick it left-handed <laughs> or right-handed. But now, oddly enough, this guitar, the, the the design of this has been called the Mary Tyler Moore. Is there any particular story <laughs> yeah, behind because that? Because it looks like her head. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, I can yeah. definitely see it now. Yeah. You might just make it. So did uh so did you pick this up used or uh, yeah oh yeah it was used it was used I bought it in a pawn shop you found this Martin in a pawn shop yeah wow yeah boy did you make out like a bandit well yeah but if the guy ever catches me I guess I might have to bring it back <laughs> you just gotta run faster than him that's all yeah and I had it it was in horrible condition um I had it sent out and I had the uh, the nut. Uh, replaced and of course the strings and the, the neck would have to be reset. So you've never this refretted guy, this guitar at all? No, those are the original frets. That's unheard of. I know, I know. Surprisingly, for my, being 1956, it wasn't played a lot. So it was just somebody's at home baby? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It stood in the corner and played every so often. But I mean something that's 60 years great. old, it looks great. Yeah. It's got a great bluegrass sound to it. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. It definitely does. Yeah.
I was looking at your banjo here, and you've got this weird little contraption up there that I'm not entirely sure what that is. Those are detuners. Detuners. Yeah, Earl Scruggs wrote a, a couple of tunes specifically for the tuners to showcase them. You know, okay, so he, he developed this particular yeah. Yeah, it was, a cam, it was a cam system that Earl had. Mm -hmm. and, Which is uh, just a, an offset circle. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And he used them for years, uh, in the, from the 50s all the way uh, until the, probably the 70s or the 80s. Oh. Yeah, and then Bill Keith came along um, in the 70s. Bill Keith came along and said, you know, you can make the whole unit, you can make the whole thing enclosed. They're so you got all locking encased. points. Yeah, they're all so encased. So if you, if you detune it, Time you can't go any further than that. Correct. But you can come right back to it. That's right. Okay. That's right. Is there yeah. any way you can maybe give me an example of what that sounds like? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we could do something here.
Wonderful to meet you. Wonderful to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right. You guys have a good one now. All right. You too. You too. Take off with this guitar now. <laughs> <laughs>